foolish pride. Some of us embrace it. Some of us relish in it. Some of us don't know how to act in public with it. Some of us don't know how to be humble. Some of us will always assert that humility is weakness. The book of James takes us to chapter 4, verse 6. But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Arrogance seems to stem from pride, and arrogant people are a problem in the eyes of the Lord. They only need themselves, and believe they answer to no one, and believe that everyone else is subject to their wishes, wants, and suggestions, which can lead to yet another resulting spirit of selfishness. The wicked, through the pride of his continence, will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. Psalms 10.4 these types sit on their high horse. They look down on everyone else. Everything you do, they can do better, or their stuff's better than everyone else's stuff. So they claim. And at some point, they'll face something that compromises their reputation, their good name, or whatever ego-based thing they vainly take pride in. Proverbs 29.23 says to us, A man's pride shall bring him low but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. Sometimes it takes a good old slice of humble pie to bring us to our senses, and it's easy to get out of hand. I'm convinced that breakups, split-ups, and the end of friendships and family feuds, they'd all be reduced by 90% in a world where everyone actually respects one another. Hypothetically. A world without pride, you ask? It would take a worldwide revival, everyone getting the Holy Ghost. That's the only way that can happen in this crazy world. That's what I suppose, anyway. The reality of the matter is that pride is here in our everyday lives. Pride will be behind many conflicts. Pride will keep you from apologizing. It will keep you from accepting certain things or people or certain things from people. It'll keep you from being down to earth. It'll keep you from being likable, you know, especially when it's in large doses. Proverbs 16.5 reads, Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though hand joined in hand, he shall not be unpunished. So being humbled may yet be the only way to bring some of us off those high horses, especially those of us who don't know when to be gracious or be quiet. Loose lips will get many of us in trouble. Let's go to Proverbs 14.3. In the mouth of the foolish is a rod of pride, but the lips of the wise shall preserve them. Do we really have to have the last word? Do we really have to give someone a piece of our mind? Do we always have to be sarcastic in spite? With those who have opinions we don't always agree with or support. Many of us don't know how to hold our peace. A big mouth may get you stabbed, might get you shot in the face. You pick that wrong fight and it's over. We live in a world where people will Shoot you for stepping on their new Jordans. Psalms 59, 12 reads, For the sin of their mouth and the words of their lips, let them even be taken in their pride, and for cursing and lying which they speak. Pride will keep you from admitting your faults and weaknesses, from knowing or admitting your limitations, keep you from financial security while you're trying to keep up with the Joneses. It will keep you from knowing when to quit or walk away when you know it's time to. It will keep you from being respectful and kind with your words. The common denominator is failure down the road. Failure and loss. 
If you're at odds with others all around you, or in a position of authority, if you have some type of power, and if you're cocky and arrogant, if you're always showing off, if you're always trying to assert yourself as the foremost expert who knows everything there is to know about everything, everyone around you will like nothing more than to see you fall flat on your face and fail. Proverbs chapter 16, we read, Pride goeth before destruction, and an haughty spirit before a fall. Pride, it does get the best of us, so we need to be mindful of our composure and be calm and collected. Psalms 36.11 shows us, Let not the foot of pride come against me, and let not the hand of the wicked remove me. Let's go into prayer. Jesus, forgive me for all sins I can't recall and all sins I'm fully aware of. I know I'm accountable for every one of them, and I turn away from those things that offend you. I ask that they all be blotted out, forgotten, washed away with the blood that you shed on the cross for my sake. Forgive me for opening up the doors to the enemy, doors that allow demons and devils to pursue me, doors I should never ever opened in the first place. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ to place the blood of Jesus Christ on myself, my life, my being, my soul, my heart, my mind, my spirit. Let all wickedness, all unholiness be taken away from me. Let it all be erased. If there is any frustration or unforgiveness or contention or strife or pettiness or childish behavior or immaturity or anything that would hinder my, my walk with you or separate me from your love or the Heavenly Father's grace and mercy or from the kingdom of heaven, then Lord, let me forgive anybody for what they may have done to me, even things I can't even remember. Let all of those people be blessed and be well. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, renew my mind, cleanse my heart, Purify my soul and spirit. Hallelujah. By the power and authority of Jesus Christ's name, I bind. Pride. Ego. Vanity. Machismo. Cockiness. Boasting. Bragging. Pompousness. Arrogance. Haughtiness. Stubbornness. Being obstinate. The need to prove. Showboating. Smugness. Conceit. Thanklessness, being inconsiderate, thoughtlessness, vainglory, selfishness, idleness, hypocrisy, contentions, looking down on others, exaggeration of self, exaggeration of accomplishments, self-importance, self-centeredness, self-righteous, self-inflated, self-serving, self-involved, lack of control lack of discipline, false virtue, lack of humility, and vulnerability, will to power. By the power and authority of Jesus Christ's name, I bind Satan and all demons and devils I collectively named in every other unclean spirit in association and affiliation related and resulting to and from them. I rebuke and renounce and resist and reject and refuse all of the unclean spirits that I named. By the power and authority of Jesus Christ's name, I placed the blood of Jesus Christ at the root at which they all came in to attack me, to tempt me, to oppress me, torment me, pester me, discourage me, to try to cause me to falter in my walk in Christ. By the power and authority of Jesus Christ's name, I cast all of you demons and devils out. I cast you all away from my presence. I cast you all out of my life. I detach you all from my life. I detach you from my being. I detach you from my will, my mind, from my emotions, from my feelings. All of you have to go this instant. None of you demons have the legal right or the legal authority to be in my life or my presence. By the power and authority of Jesus Christ's name, I destroy every legal hold, every legal ground, every legal right that demons have to work in my life. I bind and cast all connected, related, and resisting demons out. 
By the power and authority of Jesus Christ's name, I declare that every curse, net, snare, binding, band, bondage, stronghold is broken. Heavenly Father, in Jesus Christ's name, I ask you to send angels fully armored and weaponized to war a good warfare on my behalf, to release me from the enemy's clutches, to seek out, to break, to cut, to undo, to uproot, neutralize, dig out, extract, uncoil, untangle, sever, cast off, and remove all demons and devils and their demonic unclean roots, fetters, bands, bonds, ties, coils, tangles, serpents, cords, metals, wires, hairs, webs, and anything else. Let all of their evil works be undone and destroyed in Jesus Christ's name. In the name of Jesus, I forbid and prohibit all satanic and demonic activity against me in my life, all harming and hurting, all lying and deceiving, all manifesting and influencing, all transference of evil spirits, and all thought, communication, advice, control, power, and strength between the demons influencing me with each other, between the demons influencing me with those demons in the heavenlies, and between the demons influencing me with those demons and other people or around their presence. I ask for it in prayer and declare it in Jesus Christ's name, therefore it is done. By the power and authority of Jesus Christ's name, I close all doors to Satan and all of his devils and demons. All of them are enemies of the Lord, which make them my enemy as well. By the power and authority of Jesus Christ's name, I seal those doors shut with the blood of Jesus Christ. By the power and authority of Jesus Christ's name, I command all of you unclean and displaced spirits to go to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to be judged. You will all kneel and bow before Jesus Christ at his feet, where you will all be held accountable for what you've done to me and however many others before me you've led to their ruin and demise. By the power and authority of Jesus Christ's name, I forbid any of you to go to anyone or anything else along the way to your judgments. By the power and authority of Jesus Christ's name, I forbid you to return to pester me. Lord, let the Holy Ghost increase inside of me. Let the fruits of the Spirit increase. Let my discernment increase to the point where I can address everything in prayer as I need to. Jesus, let nothing hinder my walk with you. Let nothing hinder my blessings or prayers from being answered. Let nothing harden my heart against you or the Heavenly Father. Let nothing separate me from you or the Heavenly Father. Jesus, I know you died for me. You were buried and rose up again on the third day for my sake and all of our sakes. I know that you are the Son of the Most High, Almighty God, Yahweh, our Heavenly Father. Jesus, you are the King of Kings, Lord of Lords my Redeemer, my Deliverer, my Lord and Savior, my best friend. Thank you again. In Jesus' name, amen.